will appear muscular, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with how much exercise she's done. We have the term, though, bodybuilding. What part of the body is being built when a woman is training? Women can do, women should do, and any woman will improve, markedly improve, her appearance by doing proper exercise, and that includes lifting of weights. In fact, that just about is limited to the lifting of weights in one form or another because no other form of exercise is of any real value, particularly for the purpose of shaping and toning the body, improving your endurance, your cardiovascular ability, your flexibility, and all the other possible benefits that women need. You mentioned uh, lifting of weights and improving your cardiovascular ability. Can you, in fact, improve your cardiovascular Steve, ability? Steve, the lifting, lifting of weights is so much superior for the purpose of improving the cardiovascular condition of a human being that whatever's in second place is not even in the running. No pun intended. That is to say, running is a very poor, a very dangerous, a very slow, a very inefficient, a very non-productive method for eventually producing a very limited, low order of cardiovascular benefit. Any, any results that can be produced by any amount of running can be duplicated and surpassed by the proper use of weightlifting for cardiovascular benefits. Now, I realize that there are hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people in this country who don't understand that, who don't believe that, who will not admit that. Now, these people are simply uninformed. Certainly, it's possible to run with no benefit. It's possible to lift weights with no benefit. I'm talking about the proper use of weightlifting and properly applied weightlifting will improve your cardiovascular benefit to a degree that is impossible to attain with any amount of running. What will the progressive resistance or weight training do to the woman as far as flexibility is concerned? Again, it depends upon uh, how well she trains, how properly she trains. People need exercise. Exercise is one of the basic requirements of life. Without exercise, you, if you don't use it, you lose it. That applies to your brain, it applies to your muscles, it applies to your lungs, your heart, or anything else. Exercise is a basic requirement for life. You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You can't take a misshapen, gross caricature of a human being and turn him into a Bo Derrick or an Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you can improve them. It, on a scale of zero to 10, you might take a man or a woman that's a two and improve them to where they become a three or a four. They're still not going to win a beauty contest or a physique contest, but they will be markedly improved. Is there a difference, Arthur? You mentioned that a woman who uh, trains properly can expect to dramatically increase their strength. Is there a difference between strength and endurance? That is a subject that is so complex it would take me six hours to scratch the surface, and we don't have six hours, so I'll pass over that one. What age group are we talking about as far as women uh, exercising? Should they do it at any age, or should they start after puberty, or? Before. Ideally, people should start exercising at a very early age, six or seven years of age, and continue it as long as they live. And if they do, it will add immeasurable benefits, not only to their health, probably to their longevity, and certainly, even though it may or may not add years to their life, it will certainly add a lot of life to their years. We'll be right back with Mr. Arthur Jones. Welcome back. We're talking with Arthur Jones about exercise and women. Arthur, how about exercise in pregnant women? At the moment, Steve, we're in the very preliminary stages of doing some research into the exercise of pregnant women. But even in the preliminary stages, it's very obvious that 
benefits, perhaps great benefits, can be produced. Muscular strength, condition, endurance are important. They're a basic necessity for normal life. They appear to be particularly of great importance for pregnant women. And most women, not to say most men, because they too are out of condition on the average, but most women in this country today are in pitiful physical condition. Now they become pregnant, so they do even less in the way of meaningful physical work or exercise. So they lose a large part of what little strength and endurance they had normally, and they need it. As a consequence, Cosmetic changes occur and other changes occur. A deterioration, a loss of appearance occurs in pregnancy that could in some cases be entirely and in most cases largely prevented. Now what I'm telling you very plainly is that a lot of the loss of appearance that seems to be uh, accepted today as being natural to pregnancy. You're talking about things like stretch marks. Can be avoided by proper exercise. Some of those uh, negatives of being pregnant can be avoided by proper exercise before, during, and immediately following delivery. Before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and immediately following the delivery of the child, exercise is extremely important. I might say that exercise for pregnant women is probably more important than for any other category of women. Can a woman begin an exercise program for the first time when they find out they're pregnant if they haven't had any exercise experience they previously? They can begin an exercise program two weeks before delivery with benefit. Obviously, the longer they've been in the program, the more benefit it would. Ideally, they should be in good shape before they become pregnant. They should continue to train with certain changes during and throughout the pregnancy, practically up to the moment of delivery. And they should start a rehabilitation program no later than two weeks after a normal delivery. You find a lot of women are complaining about being overweight. Obesity is one of the main things you see, even in pregnant women. Will this kind of exercise, exer Steve, has very little to do with body weight. It has absolutely nothing on any meaningful scale to do with body fat. Being overweight or obese is simply a matter of eating too much. Exercise will improve or at least maintain the strength of the muscles, which is important. Uh, as the breasts enlarge during pregnancy, uh, they become heavier. As the stomach uh, enlarges, the entire abdominal area of the woman becomes much larger and heavier. The people, the, the woman's posture change. <clears throat> the woman's posture changes markedly, so they start leaning backwards. The breasts have a tendency to sag. Now, not all, but a large part of these problems are due simply to very weak muscles. And to some major degree, in practically all cases, a lot of this can be prevented by a proper exercise program. And I think we've already demonstrated that the average delivery can be eased by again by a proper training. What do you mean by program. delivery being eased? The time in labor? The, the time in labor? The uh, uh, one very preliminary uh, set of statistics seems to indicate that the number of uh, cesarean sections in a rather random group of women was markedly reduced by those that were uh, involved in exercise programs. Now, I, I, again, I want to point out all of this is very preliminary, but some of it is obvious. A physical condition is not just an idea, not just a a desirable uh, thing, but good physical condition is a necessity for a normal, healthy life, and particularly for a pregnant woman. A lot of women are confused. I mean, I think you got the point across that everyone should exercise, and it's particularly efficacious during and after the, the period of pregnancy. A lot of women are confused about how often to exercise. 
particularly when it comes to, to lifting weights and pumping iron, is it something that they have to do every single day in order to stay in shape? No. In fact, uh, daily exercise in most, uh, in most situations is a mistake. Normally, you should train about three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I've mentioned already two or three times we're in the very preliminary stages of the research into exercise programs for pregnant women. But within another year, I think we will have some very meaningful statistics and some very meaningful advice on this subject. What if a gal has been exercising for a period of time, then for some reason goes on vacation or quits exercising, should they start exercising back at a different level or can they just continue at the level that they were prior to the time that they, uh, they went on their vacation or whatever? If you don't use it, you lose it. Exercise has temporary benefits and it has permanent benefits. If you start at a level of two on a scale of zero to ten, and by exercising you raise yourself to a level of six and then you quit, you will not remain at a six but you will not go back to a two, you might drop back to a three. Then if you start exercising again, you will go back to the six level more rapidly the second time than you did the first time. So some of the benefits of exercise are temporary and some of them are permanent. Stay with us, we'll be right back with my guest, Mr. Arthur Jones, creator of the Nautilus equipment. My guest is Arthur Jones. Our subject is exercise and women. How about exercise and women athletes, Arthur? Most women athletes are women athletes because of genetic factors that they themselves are totally unaware of. And this gives a problem in many cases. Uh, fairly recently in a conversation with a woman, she raised certain questions about, well, I don't want to look muscular, I don't want big, broad shoulders, and I said, uh, exercise will not broaden your shoulders. And she said, well, what about all of the women swimmers? They have broad shoulders. They are women swimmers because they have broad shoulders, not the other way around. They're confusing cause and effect. Exercise does not increase the length of your bones and the breadth of your shoulders is genetically predetermined prior to birth, primarily by the length of your clavicles. Now, no amount of exercise is going to make your clavicles or any of your other bones any longer than they would have been. So if a woman has broad shoulders, this is genetically determined. And if she has broad shoulders, and certain other genetically determined factors, then she will be a better than average swimmer. Being a better than average swimmer, she will be attracted to swimming. So there's a, a great deal of confusion. Uh, women are afraid that they too will look like uh, uh, some famous woman athlete that they don't admire as far as appearance is concerned. But ask yourself, Steve, some of the most beautiful women in the world have been ice skaters and swimmers and dancers. Now, uh, do these, these women uh, look much like Arnold Schwarzenegger? No, they don't. Are these women attractive? Yes, they're very attractive. So the fact that uh, a Russian weightlifter, a woman weightlifter, or a Russian uh, 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 hammer thrower or shot putter weighs 250 pounds and has broad shoulders does not mean that if the average housewife trains with weights that she's going to look like that. If a woman begins to train with weights and is neither an athlete nor a person who previously had exercised, will the increase of strength and the increase in flexibility that comes from the weight training necessarily make them a better athlete? They will be a better athlete, but not necessarily a champion athlete. Champion athletes are not average people off the street. They're genetic freaks. They have genetically predetermined uh, characteristics that give them an advantage in a particular activity. And they are more or less called out by nature and, and directed in a certain direction by these genetically determined or predetermined physical characteristics. Uh, playing basketball doesn't make you seven feet tall, but if you're seven feet tall, you will naturally be attracted in the direction of basketball. 
because you'll have an advantage, a genetic advantage. And the same thing is true with women. In very simple terms, Steve, proper exercise will make any woman in the world, without single exception, a more attractive woman, a more efficient woman, a more feminine-looking woman, a woman uh, more acceptable to and more attractive to the opposite sex. It will not defeminize a woman. It will not masculinize a woman. Any, there is not a single exception on the planet. There shall never have been, that's future perfect, a single exception. Exercise is desirable for all women of any age, and all of them will be more attractive as a result of it. My thanks to you, Mr. Arthur Jones, for being a guest on The Medicine Man, and my thanks to you for watching the show. Any questions about any of the topics we discussed today, kindly write to us in care of Post Office Box 132, Moraga, California, 94556. Good health to everyone. Thank you, Arthur. <laughs>